I've had the chance to get early hands on with the brand new Warzone, which includes the Black Ops 6 integration. So I've put together 23 things that you need to know about the new release, the good and the bad, and some of them I wasn't so keen on, but I want to make sure that you're ready for when it drops in season one, which is due mid-November. They're still in early development, so put what you'd like to see down in the comments, as I'd love to hear. Let's start with one of the most impactful changes to Warzone this year, Omni Movement. We were told that it will be an exact one-to-one -one replica of what we experienced in Black Ops 6. Though what I would say is the build that we played of Warzone was an alpha version of the game and it didn't feel as good and responsive as what we experienced during the Black Ops 6 beta. So hopefully that is resolved by release. But what it does mean is it opens a whole world of possibilities of how to outplay your opponents, as well as getting out of situations which you would have had no chance of surviving in the past. So this Warzone, you can sprint, slide and dive in any direction. So Warzone is going to be a bit faster paced and I cannot wait to see some of the gameplay clips that people pull off because honestly, they are going to be insane. One of the next big changes that you'll want to know about with this Warzone is eight attachment weapons are back. You will have the choice when building your loadouts to have either two primary weapons with five attachments or a single primary with all eight attachments and a secondary like a pistol or a launcher, which I think is going to lead to a lot more loadout variety. As we did find with the beta, most attachments have a positive impact on the weapon and don't have many cons. So we're probably going to get some really broken builds this year. However, there is a loophole. On the buy station, you will still be able to buy your guns just like in the current war zone. But a loadout gun with eight attachments costs $6,000, whilst a five attachment weapon would be only 2,500. So if you want the most powerful weapons in the game and find yourself with an abundance of cash, you're going to have the ability to quite easily get two eight attachment weapons, which could end up being pretty overpowered, which I found in my play session. But do you go for the single overpowered eight attachment weapon from the loadout or two five attachment weapons for better versatility? Let me know down in the comments. But now let's talk perks. This is actually a pretty big change in Warzone this year with perk packages being removed from the buy station and floor loot. The only way that you'll be able to get your perk pack is from your loadout or looting an opponent's after taking them down. Though you will still have the ability to find specialists from crates or buy it for $30,000 from the buy station, which gives you every perk in the game, just like it does right now. But this year, they've gone for a pick three system where you can choose three of the 18 available perks to create your pack, which is going to give us a ton of options and hopefully not have everyone running the exact same perks as we do at the moment. Then you also get the wild cards that let you break normal loadout rules. They've also done some cool stuff with perks with Tracker, for example, combining Combat Scout and Tracker together to make it a more viable option. And they've done this to a few of the other perks in the game, though we weren't able to make our own in the build that we played, so it was quite limiting for us to test out. Also, if you're looking for a brand new laptop for Black Ops 6, I cannot recommend enough from my partners, the Omen Transcend 14. I've used this thing a lot recently as I've been doing a ton of traveling with Mykonos, Call of Duty Next, and Gamescom in just the last month alone. It's got an Intel Core Ultra 9 processor and a 4070 GPU to give you that insane gaming performance that you're after on top of an OLED screen with a 2880 by 1800 resolution and 120 Hertz. It's also super lightweight and durable. Honestly, cannot recommend this enough. Make sure to check it out down in the description below and get it in time for Black Ops 6. However, though lootable perk packs are gone, each season of Warzone will have different lootable perks in the loot pool. Meaning the more you loot, the more powerful you're going to be come end game. It also might make you think about what perks you include in your loadout if they're available in the loot pool. 
There's also some exclusive lootable perks like Irradiated, which you cannot choose to have in the Pick 3 system, which I don't know if I was the biggest fan of, but it could give you some unique gameplay options if you manage to find it. But perk packs being out of ground loot isn't the biggest removal in Warzone this year. Backpacks are. They're completely gone. No more players holding on to five airstrikes and spamming streaks in the end game. We're going back to the Verdance days where you had to decide what streak that you wanted to keep a hold of and use it when you needed it most. So we'll also probably be back to rushing a buy station to pop a quick advance UAV before rushing off to rack up as many kills as possible. So from playing, it did take quite a while for me to stop trying to grab every bit of utility I came across and had to decide on keeping hold of a trophy system or a heartbeat rather than just stowing it in my backpack. This year's Warzone is definitely going to be a lot simpler when it comes to looting. Though I think with having less utility at our disposal and less streaks, it's going to slow the gameplay down just a bit. Though with backpacks being removed, they've added two satchels into the game, an armor satchel and a munition satchel. The plate vest will allow you to carry up to 12 plates at any one time, whilst without it, you'll only be able to carry six. Then the munitions vest significantly increased the amount of ammo that you could hold on to. And ammo was actually a big problem in the build that I played. I constantly found myself on Area 99 out of ammo. There quite frankly wasn't enough on the floor or in reserve, which did get quite frustrating and something I really hope they change come season one, as it kind of reminds me of when they first dropped a Sheikah Island in Warzone 2, where we just didn't have any plates. Another cool quality of life update they made with Warzone this year is loot outlines are back. Loot on the floor will now be outlined by its rarity. So you'll be able to quickly tell at a glance what you should prioritize looting and if it's better than what you already have. This is obviously most important at the start of the game before you get your loadout, but it is a really nice change to have. Now, I know we mentioned Omni movement earlier, but that wasn't the only major change as they've made zip lines far more snappy. No longer will you have to do the zip line jump trick to not get caught at the top by a camping team. It's a really quick animation and does actually feel a lot better when moving around the map. Pings have also had some work done to them. When a player goes out of your line of sight, they no longer last as long, as it was a pretty broken mechanic, which I know a lot of pro players constantly abused and took advantage of. So that's a great thing that they've got rid of with this year's Warzone. Though combining Tracker and Combat Scout in one perk might be a little bit overpowered and still give you those pings when you need them. Warzone has also removed a lot of kill streaks from the loot pool and buy stations. No longer will you be able to get mosquito drones, which quite frankly were pretty annoying. Guardians have also been removed as they just didn't suit the Warzone gameplay loop. And then bomb drones have also been taken out of the game but you'll still be able to use a recon drone and create your own bomb drone with C4 like people used to do back in Verdansk. Now, something I'm pretty excited about with the new Warzone is that we're getting our very own dedicated mastery camo grind. In previous years, we've always had to share with multiplayer, but that is no longer the case. We will have four camos, Gold Tiger, which looks pretty cool, King's Ransom, which to me reminded me of Diamond from Black Ops 3, Catalyst, which I didn't think looked that great, but then Abyss, which in my opinion is one of the best looking mastery camos out of multiplayer and zombies. They've not shared what the challenges for the unlocks will be just yet, but I can imagine placements, kills and headshots are pretty likely. Let me know what you think of the camos in the comments. Another thing I know a lot of people have wanted with Warzone this year is unlimited tax brim, which you could get with the lootable boots. But there are actually a couple of ways you'll be able to get that with this version of Warzone. One will be with one of the 18 perks and the other will be available to you at all times whilst playing the game. And that will be by holding your weapon swap button and drawing out your melee weapon. As long as you've got your melee weapon in hand, you will run at max speed and have unlimited tax brim 
which is going to be one of the best ways to move around the map or get out of tricky situations. Plus, it means you've always got a melee weapon if you do manage to run out of ammo. One of the other big things this year, which I think will change how a lot of players play the game, is HUD customization. There will be a bunch of presets available if you don't want to make your own, but you will be able to choose where key information is placed on your screen. This is huge because you'll be able to do things like have your minimap a little closer in so you can constantly check it that little bit easier. Or you might be one of those players that sometimes forgets to reload so you could place the ammo count right next to your crosshairs so you know exactly how many bullets you've got left. Or you could even make yourself have an even bigger challenge, which is something I'm definitely looking forward to doing and play hardcore and just disable the HUD completely, which will give you a completely different Warzone experience. And I think this is quite a big step for Call of Duty, as it's a game that's never really allowed players to customize too many things in the past. So this is one feature I'm really excited to experiment with when Warzone drops. Another big thing to be aware of with Warzone this year, with the pace of gunfights being likely to be a little bit faster than what we've been used to, especially at close range, you'll probably want to work on increasing your sensitivity to be able to keep up with some of the movements that players are going to be doing with Omni Movement. Now, I've played Warzone all year on a 6-6, but with Black Ops 6, I'll be upping that to a 7-7, as players are definitely going to have way more opportunities to break your camera and win gunfights with those sideways slides. So you might want to start even getting used to that now before the Season 1 release. But in line with Black Ops 6, Aim Assist will also be receiving those changes that were applied to multiplayer, with them wanting to keep a universal experience for players hopping between Black Ops 6 and Warzone. So at close range, if you're using a controller, you will actually lose Aim Assist within 3 meters, giving mouse and keyboard players a better chance in those close range gunfights. It's a pretty significant change and something you definitely want to be aware of as they also did remove a bunch of different aim assist settings that we had in the menus this year. Another big change with Warzone this year that I'm quite excited for is custom reticles are coming back. No longer do we have to choose our optic based off the reticle that that optic has. We will once again be able to use a blue dot on all of our close range optics or perhaps stick with a T-pose for medium range. But that's one thing I have realized from early access with Warzone this year. We have far more customization and ways to give ourselves the best experience possible than what we did during the last two years of Modern Warfare. On top of custom reticles, they've also brought back emotes, which are actually similar to what we had in Blackout. They're not the original Warzone emotes, which you could do things like drink a scorpion, but third person ones. Now, I was slightly concerned with this as people could use these emotes to third person peak corners without showing themselves, which I still do think will happen in certain scenarios in the game, such as when you're stuck behind a wall and want to wait for the sniper to stop hardscoping you but there is a delay from being able to exit the emote, which could leave you as a sitting duck. Sprays are also back, so we can expect to see some fun clips again of tricking enemy players or just trying to camouflage your teammate when they've quickly gone to the toilet. Oh, another big thing. The menus and invite systems are so much better this year. I think it's been one of my biggest complaints with Warzone and still right now I struggle to invite my friends into a lobby but from what we got to use at COD Next from making our loadouts in Gunsmith to inviting friends it looks a hell of a lot better. And of course, I couldn't not talk about Vidansk in this video, as it's quite possibly going to be one of the biggest moments in Warzone for a long, long time. Now, they've told us this map will be released in spring and is going to be the OG Vidansk map, so the one that actually ended up getting nuked. We don't know yet if Stadium is going to be open or closed, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. But I do have a prediction of the exact date it's going to be released, and that's March 10th, because that will be the five year anniversary of Warzone being released. But though we have to wait till March, most likely for a new big map with Verdansk, we will be getting ranked play before that 
on Urzikstan, which we've all been screaming for all year, as I just don't think ranked on Rebirth Island works that well. But from what they've said, it should be before the mid season one update. So we won't have to wait long after release. One of the biggest things you're going to want to know for Warzone is the weapons. And yes, everything is carrying across from MW2 and MW3, including camos, but They'll definitely be making the Black Ops 6 weapons the more viable weapons in the meta, especially with their new approach to attachments, with them no longer giving many cons. We've got three assault rifles confirmed with the Ames 85, AK-47, and my personal favorite, the XM4, which I used a lot during my gameplay. Then we've got three SMGs, the C9, which is like an MP5, the Jackal PDW, which was pretty broken in the first weekend of the beta, and then the Tanto Dot 22. Two snipers with the SVD and the LR762, two marksman rifles, the SWAT 556 and the DM10, the Marine SP shotgun, and then the XMG LMG. But there's going to be a lot of choice at launch, as that's just the early access weapons. We also have a brand new resurgence map coming with the launch of Warzone called Area 99. But I honestly think it needs some work done before launch, because it just wasn't great to look at. I think the gameplay in the different areas was good, but it all just looked the same color and just wasn't nice to look at at all. It might just be my opinion, but I want a pretty map and was one of the things I liked most when Rebirth Island got brightened up in the past. So hopefully they do that before season one drops. But one thing we can definitely be sure of, this year's Warzone is going to be the biggest one yet. Let me know what you think in the comments and subscribe if you're new. Bye.